Silvergate Bank, Silicon Valley Bank, Signature Bank, all three of them totally screwed the pooch. And all three of them are on and off ramps for crypto. So what's the moral of the story? Do not trust your money in any bank that starts with the letter S. <laughs> But all kidding aside, along comes the government with yet another bailout. USDC even unpegged for a time over the weekend. And guess what? Even Tether is being wonky. What does all of this mean to the world of crypto and blockchain? Join us today for keen and less than worthy analysis on our bad news episode number 673 of the Bad Crypto Podcast. Five, four, three, two. Who's bad? Hello, friends. Lord Joel and Lord Travis here for another episode of the Bad Crypto Podcast. This one coming hot on the heels of a weekend that will go down in infamy. Hello, Trav. My, my, my. Crypto goes down, crypto goes up, crypto goes down, crypto goes up. And whoa, it's, you know, it's really up today. Have you noticed that, Joel? The world, it is up today and the world doesn't change. Like here we are with uh, the the second biggest bank failure in U.S. history and the U.S. government stepping in to stop the contagion and the dominoes falling. Trevor, are there any other banks that people should avoid? I mean, knowing that, you know, S is a bad starter for a bank. Yeah, bank. yeah, that's so true. So maybe if you are Santander Bank, I want to be on the lookout. South State Bank, uh, Security Bank. There's a few of those out there. S and T. That's one. Stockyards Bank. I mean, there's a lot of S wait, wait. banks out there. Sally May. There's a bank San out there. Santana has a bank. Do they yeah, play Santana rock? has a bank, and they play guitar when you come in. That's awesome. <laughs> come to our bank. We're gonna have a bank run here. We've been talking about this stuff for a while, folks, and mm -hmm. and. You know, it's like, what happens? What are some of the first stages of a potential traditional financial system collapse? Mm -hmm. Because if you've listened to some of the previous episodes that we've done, G. Edward Griffin, and talking about the creation of the Federal Reserve Banking System, the creation of fiat currency, how the life of a world reserve currency, Joel, last, what, 80, 90 years, mm -hmm. maybe? Yep. And here we are. So like all of these things are sort of lining up. And then you had the pandemic and then you had all these banks taking in deposits and then putting them into risky things. It's just it's just crazy watching what's going on. And one thing that's peculiar to me, Joel, is that every one of these banks are like innovation friendly kind of banks. They and are. So my, I'm, I'm going to just throw a conspiracy hat on to say this because communists hate entrepreneurs traditionally those are some of the first people to get wiped out like if you talk at chimer rouge and some of these other places you know china russia soviet union the entrepreneurs the bankers the well-educated the lawyers they all get wiped out right and so how do you begin to do a great reset? You got to do something to corral entrepreneurial mentality and that mindset, I would think. Well, right? you, you actually start that by bailing out the big banks in 2008 and nine, and mm -hmm. then you further um, make the system worse by locking everybody into their homes mm -hmm. <laughs> for a pandemic and saying, shut yeah. down your business. Yeah. I mean, that that's kind of a good way to uh, eliminate the it's middle true. class. This uh, right here the, scares me a little. Here's why this scares me a little bit. And we'll get into the, 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 the coin gecko which is blowing up but what's really interesting about this is you know they say oh 93 percent of the deposits in in silicon valley bank are are not fdic secured well what are they going to do they're going to go in they're going to prop up all the billionaires and these big companies that are in there they're going to prop them up uh, and then they're going to deplete the fdic coffers it would seem so then whenever bank runs happen on some of these other banks then there's not going to be any money left to be able to do anything to help the little guy. So this is right here is propping up the big guy, helping up the big guy. And when it's time to help out the little guy, they're going to be like, F you, man. You're so how is this 
affecting the traditional crypto markets. Timestamp, uh, it is March the 13th, 2023, 11.52 Atlantic Standard Time. And the total crypto market cap is $1 trillion, point, uh, 112 billion. Bitcoin on a big move over the last 24 hours with the news of the bailouts up 18%, 24,162. Ethereum up 15%, 1678. Tether, I saw hit a dollar four. So you could say Tether de-pegged in a good way. BNB, $310. USDC coin just short of a dollar again. Nice to see. XRP, 38 cents. Cardano, 35. Polygon, a buck 18. Dogecoin, 7 cents. And staked either. Who cares? Look, look at this, though, Trav. Here is the de-pegging of USDC uh, over the last, I'll do, I'll do the seven-day chart. Look at this. It got down. USDC got down to 87.8 cents. Mm. The, this cliff here, it just went. As soon as the news came out Friday, you can see it right here, 5 o'clock Friday, with with the, the um, idea that Circle had $3 billion exposure in Silicon Valley Bank. Mm -hmm. So based on the amount that, that Circle has in, like how much, let's see, how much do they have right now overall? It, what is in? I'm just going to resort this bad boy here. So if we look at the USD coin, they've got about forty billion dollars of exposure. And so if you're factoring in forty billion dollars, three point three billion of that is in the one bank that just tanked. That would take, you know, the depegging would make sense because that's about what ten nine ten percent or something. Yeah, uh, no, not quite ten percent. So probably about seven percent uh, of the total amount of circles money would be in that bank, which means that maybe $1 or one USD coin would be worth 93 cents would have been a smart thing. If, if, if that goes away, then then USDC would be worth 93 cents because they lost 3 billion of that dollars. That's what would have made sense to me. Now, what would have been smart, Trav, is buying some USDC at 90 cents because you're like, you're, there's your 10% Well, return. maybe, but you don't know. It, hindsight is always 20-20. It would have been a great thing to go back in time and do that. Hell, actually would have been better at this point to go in and and um, seven days ago buy Kava. Kava's up 40%. So it's yeah, like, I mean, damn it. Why didn't you We can, you we can always, I have amazing hindsight vision, Joel. I can look back 2020 vision backwards. Looking forwards, it's a little more blurry. So Silicon Valley Bank was the big news, came out on Friday, failed on March 10th, swallowing hundreds of billions of dollars in deposits. SVB was forced to take a massive $1.8 billion loss thanks to parking consumer funds and mortgage-backed securities, the price of which also suffered during the Fed's rate hike. And then there, of course, yeah. was the snowball effect. Well, it is, it's, it's, it's interesting because they were, in, earlier this month, they started experiencing some financial problems. Right. And I noticed this. There's a dude who's who's one of their main executives who was the CFO of Lehman Brothers. Right. When they collapsed. Right. Did you see that? I did. Moving from weird. one failure to another. Right? Yeah. And what was weird about it is uh, like Silicon Valley Bank did not have a risk officer and neither did Lehman Brothers. They literally did. So Silicon Valley Bank, actually, <laughs> one of their things that they posted like about a week ago was them talking about their woke inclusion thing and how they were really focusing on, you know, helping trans people or something. I don't, I don't, I don't remember the details of it, but it was like, you might've wanted to maybe focus on your risk management and putting mm -hmm. your assets in places. And this really Joel showcases the problem of fractional reserve banking, because if I have a million dollars, I put that million dollars in the bank. Well, what they can do is they can loan that out nine times. Like, so that's basically my $1 million to a bank turns into $10 million of loanable assets that they're creating money out of thin air. So whenever a bank run happens, which hasn't happened in America for the longest time, right? I mean, even we had, the, you know, stuff crashing in 2008, 2009, it was nothing like what was crashing in, in the, before the Great Depression, right? When people were making huge bank runs and trying to get all their money out. Well, now people are starting to see, people are starting to learn, Joel, why the traditional financial system is flawed. It benefits a few, and basically it's, it's, it's not great for the rest of us. What they're saying here, the government is saying that um, no losses associated with the bailout will be borne by the taxpayer. But I don't understand how right, that's possible when, every, when the government is run completely on taxes. 
How how is that possible? Maybe I'm I'm just missing how this works here. Well, maybe it's well. So you don't know money out of thin air. (laughs) They print money out of thin air, right? I'm not sure exactly how the FDIC is set up. How do they get their funding to protect things? They're saying, oh, it's gonna. This is probably this them going, hey, yeah, taxpayers, you're not gonna have to worry about. Okay, okay, government says taxpayer don't need no pay. Okay, like. It's just a misdirection is all this is. So uh, they're, they are building uh, the FDIC, Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, which is an independent corporation, is creating a new bridge bank that I guess they will fund so that the Silicon Valley Bank customers can access their funds. And uh, beginning this morning, apparently, they are that's going to happen i don't know how they make that happen so quickly but it's called the silicon valley bank na operated by the fdic so (laughs) the fdic named former fannie mae ceo tim mayopolis as the ceo of the bridge bank like can this financial system be any more incestuous what a clown world how is the cfo of lehman brothers Actually, the guy, one of the guys over there at, at, at Silicon Valley Bank, how is the head, former CEO of Fannie Mae part of this? See, this is crazy. And you know what? I think part of the reason why they're making everyone whole, normally the FDIC will only, uh, you know, um, make people whole up to $250,000. Right. Well, there's rumors that Oprah has like five, six hundred million dollars in that bank, <laughs> like Prince Harry and Meghan have all of their money mm. in Silicon Valley Bank, which would be really bad because they wouldn't be able to do that worldwide privacy, y'all. They want privacy, y'all. <laughs> we want privacy. That is interesting. You know, the take care of the rich, right? The, Taking the, care of the rich, depleting the, the FDIC so that when it comes time to make them whole, they're not going to be able to do it. Now, Travis, That's what it seems like to me. That's Travis having his conspiracy hat on. Fun. I think we should just go buy a bank because apparently uh, an HSBC subsidiary is getting Silicon Valley Bank's UK branch mm-hmm. for one pound. Yeah. You, you go step yeah. right in there and and buy a bank. China. A dollar 21. SBB yeah, UK has no. got loans of 6.6 mm. 6 billion deposits of 8.1 billion and uh, HSBC is mm-hmm. going, we got this. Here's a pound. We'll take over. Yeah. China. So Silicon Valley Bank has been funding a lot of Chinese startups. Mm. Right. And so I look at this and I go, man, what really happened? Because it really kind of started with Silvergate. Right. With coin debt, with Coinbase. Because I noticed that like I, I, my Coinbase card wasn't working. And uh, the, all the stuff that was going on with Silvergate, Silvergate is, is that's one of the biggest, most friendliest crypto banks of all. On but they're not, they're not getting bailed out. That's according to this piece. They're not getting Coindex. bailed out. Why is that? Mm. Uh, might it have something to do with the fact that these are crypto on ramp and off ramps? Is that is that a possibility that this is maybe again, it's not a conspiracy hat. It's just a bad crypto podcast hat I'm wearing right now. Um, could it be that the government is trying to hamper the advancement of Bitcoin and cryptocurrency, make it more difficult for U.S. citizens to be able to get money into exchanges and off of exchanges? Well, think about the potential ramifications of Silicon Valley Bank going down. You have all of these startups that bank with SVB and then they have a bunch of money in there, but they couldn't pay their employees. Right. Right. So then you have the whole tech sector in America that could potentially go down. So I can understand Silicon Valley Bank, them wanting to do it. Um, I don't really under, I don't know much about Signature Bank, which it, it's so weird to me. Here's what's bizarre to me, Joel. You know, when the uh, train wreck thing happened in Ohio, yeah, like the government didn't even go there. They're like, yeah, whatever. Like, no, this is really toxic shit. And they're like, yeah, whatever. Like butt edge guy, whatever his name is. He didn't even go <laughs> until Trump went and, and, this happens on a Friday and they immediately pull the plug and then immediately by the weekend, they say they're going to make everyone whole. like that's the fastest I've ever seen the government move ever. Like it, it, if something wasn't coordinated there, that just it's well, tingling for me, Joel. They weren't on the same page either because Janet Yellen came out um, first and, and testified yeah. immediately that the government would not be bailing out any of these banks. And they reeled her back and said, oh, Janet, Janet, hang on. We haven't, uh, 
we, yeah, yeah. we got a call in from the Rothschilds, and yeah. uh, apparently we're going to. Okay, we're going to, yeah. you guys. We're going uh, to. Change, hey, guys, change our mind. We're going to we're gonna bail out Oprah. And yeah, Harry Jacob and Rothschild, he just messaged us on the hotline, and we got to do what he said <laughs> because he run the things. So, yeah. It's just peculiar to me, Joel. Like, you know, I would not say that we have all the answers here. You're tuning in because we're speculating just like everyone. We can see what happened because we're told what happened, right? We don't have any insiders in any of these banks. But what I'm seeing is Silicon Valley Bank is made whole. Signature Bank is made whole. Silvergate Bank did not survive, Mm -mm. right? And... Uh, their executives did. They were able to avoid taking government assistance. Their share price was down significantly, hmm. and they just had some serious problems. They they were connected with Coinbase. Um, uh, yes, yes, and I don't remember where I saw the story, but apparently, uh, at least one executive with with SVB um, with yeah, sold all their shares a couple weeks ago. You know, yeah, but they knew yeah, what was going right. on. I mean, yeah. I was, hey, uh, he went to some dude, went to his wife, say, babe, we're cashing out and uh, and moving to Caymans. <laughs> we're we're out of here. We're getting the hell out of here. We're, we're, yeah. We're so they started having problems in early March, as we said. Mm-hmm. And then that would say, wait a second, we can see the writing on the wall. While they're seeing the writing on the wall, you got Jim Cramer out there going, hey, you should buy Silicon Valley Bank. It's a buy of $320. Like whenever Jim Cramer says something, just as a general rule, not financial advice, don't fucking take his advice because he's doing misdirection somehow. Like, Well, don't take any of their advice. That dude's like 5'3". I don't know if you know this or not, but Jim Cramer's like 5'3". So he's got that little Napoleon attitude. And so uh, he must be easily bought. He is he is bought and paid for. He has a show on the networks. They pay him to put on his clown show and entertain. And look, the whole financial market is designed to take money from you, the retail investor. That's why he is there. He's there to give you very small gains. They don't want you to make a whole lot of money. You know, I was talking to a, a friend of mine who's in the financial services. I say, do people make money? listening to Kramer, if you do everything he said, yeah, you'd make your 6% a year. You know, that's, that's it. They want to keep you making your little bits while the, the financial institutions themselves are making 20, 30, 40% because they know how to use the money. They don't want you knowing how to use your money. They want to just keep you on the leash. So if you're listening to any of these services, I won't name other ones. Kramer is the easy target, but if you're subscribing, you know, to a general um, a financial advice service online, odds are you're not going to make the kind of money that you're hoping to make. Mm-hmm. They're not going to tell you when to short companies traditionally because it'd be like, oh man, this right here's a train wreck. You should go in and short it. So you got people with those executives and those talking to those people saying, hey, don't say these bad things. Hey, probably here's some money so you don't say bad things about us. You know what I mean? I don't know. I don't know if that's true or not, but that's just it's just just really weird. You know how Silvergate fell, and they had billions of cash in in uh, in actual cash, and they had well, they had four point five billion dollars in cash, and securities were set against six point three billion dollars worth of deposits. So once that bank run started happening, that made them teeter. But Silver Bank was one of the most friendly crypto banks in the world, and they're gone. Nobody's propping them up. And uh, it's just crazy stuff here. Jordan. You know, here's the thing, Trav. Um, we we in the Western world, especially in the United States, tend to be very America centric. And yet we are four to four and a half percent of the world's population. Right. So there are other banks in other places. Mm-hmm. Right. And I know the U.S. government uh, makes it difficult for U.S. citizens to be able to bank offshore in many cases. But, you know, if you're a wise investor, not financial advice, you might want to look at what options are out there before it becomes too late. Um, it, one, one piece of financial advice that we hear again and again is diversify. Uh, you know, gold, for example, right now is over $1,900, right? I think it, is it going to go to 2000 an ounce again? It should be way higher than whatever it is because of the manipulation of keeping it down. Right? Really, over the last three years, gold's price should have skyrocketed. We should be so looking right. at ten, twelve thousand dollar an ounce of gold, if not way more than that, when you eliminate all the bullshit manipulation, paper gold and paper silver, and how Comex and everybody keeps the prices down. It's just, man, the whole system's fake, dude. 
you know, in, in calling stable coins stable coins, you can't call them stable coins anymore. They're designed to be stable, mm -hmm. but clearly we have seen multiple times over the past year or so that stable coins are not. It's like common sense isn't, stable coins aren't. There's always a risk associated with it. And uh, was that the end of USDC? Turns out it's not. Could that end be in the future? Could USDT come out in the future when we find out that Tether is actually not backed? by real money if there's a real audit that takes place mm -hmm. it's possible so we should call them slightly stable coins yeah and there's a theory there's a theory that some of the other crypto influencers and content creators are talking about around circle and people saying that circle will most likely be the u.s uh cbdc down the road mm -hmm. it, you know and, and so maybe part of the propping up a silicon bank is to keep circle viable I don't, I've not gone down that rabbit hole enough to, to tell one way or the other, but something fucky's going on, Joel, and it's it's really weird. The fact that, you know, how tied crypto is with the traditional markets, oh, traditional bank is saved, yay, crypto goes up. Like, shouldn't it be, oh, the traditional market's crashing, crypto skyrockets. It's like right. crypto's hasn't decoupled enough yet like it seems right it should be the other way around joel we're still we're still uh tied at the hip but that won't be forever mm -hmm. uh meanwhile the uh the alleged president gave a message uh this morning saying the signature executives will be fired well actually he read a teleprompter and probably stumbled through it because i don't think he knows actually where he is but uh, allegedly every american said, should feel comfortable summer foreign or positive summer not and it will be this one in the knee you know firing some people you know the thing and the yeah. jack <laughs> <laughs> buddy they they, they know we're going back and take some push-ups up with a jack let's go <laughs> i don't like your attitude so there's I'm leadership for you there's 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 leadership for you Good. that's kind of funny because i remember uh yeah, donald saying you know before the election that with biden your economy is going to collapse mm -hmm. he was like he was right out your economy will collapse is it a collapse not, or is it a controlled demolition that's really what you yeah, got to be asking you either, be it doesn't matter yeah doesn't matter either way the same yeah. result for for americans right right well it uh, does matter because you got to think about where are we heading what are what's next in their roadmap and you look and see all the stuff that's going on i watched this really great video the other night talking about like you know if you think that we're not currently in a war like you see all the shit that's going on worldwide like world war three has already begun we're just now, kinda now in a i stage. Uh, uh, i watch we're just, cnn we're just watching I watch, it no, no, reality I watch tv CNN. I watch CNN and they tell me that World War Three could yeah. happen, but it's not happening it's yet. It's an information and, war, man. It's an information and war and it's an infrastructure it, war. It's not the traditional, you know, get your troops up and go shoot other troops so the globalist bankers make money. It's a matter of there's a big switch going on. And if you paid attention to history and alternative history, the global elite who have been in charge for a long time have said they need three world wars over time to change culture so that they can have a one world government in, in power. That's what no, some that's of the main conspiracy, conspiracy theorists have said. They need that's, three. That's, and now that maybe we're in the third one. Conspiracy. Shit collapses. They bring in a central digital bank currency. They bring in the Panopticon pa powered by AI and video cameras and monitoring you 15 minute cities. And like that. A conspiracy. It is a little theory. conspiratorial, was, but man, on the TV, our records have been pretty high. Hey, 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 the man on the TV said that you are crazy right. and you're a conspiracy theorist. I'm and sorry. even I'm if just a little even fired up, Joel, this is crazy shit going on. We're we are here. That's one reason why I think our souls are here right now. It's like we get to be here now when we get to watch the craziest shit in history go down. We it's get a front row seats, baby. It's a simulation, like all the stuff that we've has been predicted that is happening and people like, oh, no, no, that's a look. A lot of people got their heads buried in the sand and they don't want to believe that this stuff can happen. But bad things happen because bad people do bad things and we're watching bad things happen because bad people are in control and it's not a conspiracy theory and i'll tell you what the conspiracy theorists are batting like 999 right now so maybe 
start paying attention yeah. to the things that they're predicting and saying. And if you think that what we're saying is just a conspiracy, then perhaps what you actually need is a cranial rectal reduction. Extraction. Extraction. Yeah. yeah. Extraction. So you get that cranium out of your rectum and pay attention yeah. to see what's going on. And that's what's crazy is I started to get more messages from folks, dude, on, on Twitter and some other places going, man, when you started talking some of that conspiracy stuff, I thought you were crazy. But now for the last three years, I've been in my own running my own business. And I wish I had put on my conspiratorial hat sooner. And I know a lot of other people are out there thinking that same thing. Like, man, I wish I hadn't been paying attention. And here's what you can do. Bitcoin, get yourself some crypto, decentralized crypto outside of the financial system. When this collapses, inevitably, whenever it does, pull the plug. You will most not likely, financial advice, not financial but advice, it's never you will most likely be in a better scenario than those that do not. Never a bad idea to be your own bank, which is the principles of, of Bitcoin and decentralization. Guess what? If there is a bank run, um, you don't have to run to the bank for your Bitcoin. You're the one holding the keys unless you've got it on an exchange, which this is financial advice. Don't keep your crypto on exchanges unless you are planning on exchanging it. Keep it in your own wallet, ideally in a ledger or a treasure or some other cold storage where you and only you have the keys and you can access it anytime you want. So if everybody else is running to the bank to pull out money, you're sitting at home smoking a cigar, watching I Love Lucy reruns and going, I got my Bitcoin right here, bitches. It's mine. Woo! That yeah, was like a little on. Ric Flair like moment there by Joel. That was a Joel <laughs> rant a little bit. Hey, thanks for listening, everybody. I want to debut something right now, Trev. You didn't know I was going to do this, but you've been hard at work on bringing our properties together under a new site. And you guys can go look at it right now. This is the world premiere of the Bad Media website. If you go to badmedia.io, you can check out the handiwork of Sir Lord Travis here. There's uh, there, there we are, Stan Bad. This is all about the shows. If you go through the site, you can now look and see. Here's all the, the shows that we put out there, the Bad Crypto Podcast, the Bad AI Show, the Web3 Show, the Nifty Show. Here's how to get into our Bad Crypto community by owning a Bad Crypto community, a Bad Media um, NFT. That's Here's the latest our, one. I was actually going to fix that error right there today. That's all right. Here's our content. Here's uh, partners of the site we've got ai telegraph worldvillage.com the nifty chicks we've got some of the accomplishments that we've had in the web3 world playlists from the various shows and there, there's more to come on here gang nfts and those are uh, awesome too if you want to go here this is my favorite part on the thing click on one of those joel's one of those packs one of these which right here all right, cool we could have a pack opening which would be fun to see that but these are actually listed by uh the highest if you just look and see the highest uh, price oh, yeah. funds right now. So some <laughs> Somebody people want a million dollars for one of these NFTs, which is silly. So uh, it's yeah. kind of fun to go through and look at those NFTs that we've created over time. Uh, Joel, myself, and Zach, and my son, Jarek, uh, put together some of these things. And actually, if you go through and look at Retro Rebellion ones and the NFTs, scroll it down a little bit. Man, those are some of the coolest NFTs maybe that's ever been created ever uh, in the whole ever of time ever, which yeah. is cool. They are really amazing. And uh, as long as we're at that, I'm going to while I'm going to actually open up a pack here live on the, the video. And as we're doing it, what I want to do is I want to talk a little bit about what is happening here uh, this week. For those of you who are into Blockchain Hero collectibles, the uh, the quid app. Oh, I'm not logged into the Wax Cloud wallet on here, so I can't do it live. Uh, but if you uh, are on the Quid app, we are getting ready to launch the uh, Blockchain Heroes Retro Rebellion digital collectibles in new variations. In fact, I'll pull it up over here so that you guys can see it. This happens on March the 15th is when this is going to go live. And I think I got the tab right here. There it is. There we go, right here. Uh, it should be here in a coming soon tab. Top sales for the last 24 hours, Blockchain Heroes? Yeah, because people know that the new series, Retro Rebellion, is coming soon. So what you want to do, uh, if you are a new first-time quid user, click notify me. 
And when you do that and you sign up, there's a place for a promo code. Put in BCH25, BCH25, and you're going to get $25 in, in free credit for packs oh, nice. for this launch. So BCH25. Dude, we should send that out to everybody in the bad crypto nifty club, like an email to them. Let them know that. We will do that. That's we a good idea. We will do that and let you guys know where you can get them. So make sure that you go to the uh, the new site at badmedia.io. Check this out. We've got some cool NFTs coming your way for engaged community that members. One. That one's super cool. I love that one. This one right here is for founders of the Bad AI Show. So if you um, go to listen to any episode of badai.show, uh, you will learn how to get a founder's NFT. And we're going to cut that off pretty soon. It's going to be a free airdrop. But what it, you want to get that, but you also want to make sure that you pick up this Bad Crypto Nifty Club nft right here this is going to get you all kinds of access and airdrops we're going to be doing some special um, activations for members only and it, it the price of entry is so cheap we feel like hookers three dollars and 36 that's a cheap ass cents. hooker i don't know where that you're is. getting your hookers <laughs> <laughs> so that's going to wrap it maybe up maybe that was a hooker game. price in the 60s be of good cheer uh, we're going to take everything in stride and continue bringing you the best content we can. And uh, we're going to encourage you to stay bad. Who's bad? The Bad Crypto Podcast is a production of Bad Crypto LLC. The content of the show, the videos, and the website is provided for educational, informational, and entertainment purposes only. It's not intended to be and does not constitute financial, investment, or trading advice of any kind. You shouldn't make any decisions as to finances, investing, trading, or anything else based on this information without undertaking independent due diligence and consultation with a professional financial advisor. Please understand that the trading of Bitcoin's and alternative cryptocurrencies have potential risks involved. Anyone wishing to invest in any of the currencies or tokens mentioned on this podcast should first seek their own independent professional financial advisor.